If you're a working bass player, I can almost guarantee that at some point in your career, you're gonna be asked to play a Broadway musical. Now that doesn't mean that all of us are gonna end up on 42nd Street in a pit orchestra somewhere, but I'm pretty sure that your local high school production or your local college production, community, musical theater, or even a professional production in whatever city you live in might be looking for a bass player at some point in time. So wait, I'm a jazz musician. Why would I even wanna bother playing musicals? First of all, Musicals pay pretty well for a couple of weeks' work. Second of all, Broadway musicals have given the Great American Songbook some of its most recognizable and indelible music to date. After all, what are we playing as jazz musicians? We're playing Broadway show tunes. Many of these shows are incredible opportunities to play wonderful music written by people like Leonard Bernstein and others. If I were you, I would jump at the opportunity to play in the pit orchestra for a show. It's only a couple weeks worth of work, and you'll never know who you can meet when you're playing. After all, I met my wife playing in the pit orchestra for a show that she was acting in. So today I want to talk about the ins and outs of navigating a Broadway musical bass book. How do we do it? How do we make it easy on ourselves? What are some shortcuts? What are some tips that I can give you about marking up your book and how to do it? But first, the most important instrument you need to have other than your bass, and that's a pencil. That's right. Broadway shows differ every time you do them. Nobody's going to do a show exactly the way that it's written in a book. There are going to be changes to be made, and you have to have a pencil to make those changes. Personally, I like to have about four or five in every bass case I own. So make sure if you're reading music somewhere, there's gonna be something to write down. Always have a pencil. Let's get started. Number one, brackets. If there's anything you're gonna do more than anything else, and anything I've done more than anything else over the last 30 years of playing shows, that's cut music inside of a Broadway show book or add music to a Broadway show book. And brackets are the tool that's gonna to help you do that the most successfully. There's two kinds of brackets usually we're gonna see. The first kind is to extend the music. That means the music needs to be extended for some reason. It could be a set change, it could be a costume change, uh, it could be a dance break. You're gonna to have to vamp music before the song starts or within the song or at the end of the song. Brackets are a very easy way for you to add repeats around measures that you need to vamp to extend the music. Brackets also work the other way. I guarantee if you do a show, this is gonna happen more than once. Use a bracket to remove a section of music. I use brackets to help me do this. Now the first inclination is to maybe scratch out the bars you don't need, definitely don't do that. Brackets are kind of a standard way to make a very simple mark to show that you're gonna jump from one measure to the next. So take the end of the first measure you're gonna cut from and make a nice eye bracket with a circle in the middle of it, then a nice line that connects you to the bar that you're gonna start playing at again. Make a nice eye bracket with a circle at the beginning of that bar, and voila, you have your cut, a bracket leads to another bracket without a lot of unnecessary scribbling on the page. Here's your first tip. Don't write any harder or any more than you have to. Whenever someone puts on a Broadway show on any level, they have to buy the rights to the show and they have to rent the scripts and the pit orchestra books. These books usually have to be returned at the end of a run and erased thoroughly or the company is gonna be fined. Try to make your scribbles kinda light and don't write any more than you have to. Your MD is not gonna like you at the end when they have to erase everything you've scratched in the book. Number two, arrows and lines. These are the building blocks of getting through a book. Arrows and lines can tell us a lot of information with just a couple of swipes of a pencil. I personally use arrows to indicate a variety of things. First being cues from an MD or a conductor. 
I like to mark where a conductor is actually going to be cueing so that I know what's coming up. For instance, with this piece of music, there's three beats. All three of them are going to be nods from the conductor. There's really no time. So I'm going to watch the conductor. I'm going to use arrows to let me know that I'm not counting and all three of those notes are going to be nods from the MD to let me know when to play. I also like to use arrows to indicate tempo changes. The music is very fluid when you're doing a Broadway musical. Oftentimes your tempos will change and be very fluid. Things need to slow down sometimes or speed up and it's not indicated in the music. So when a conductor tells me that we're going to kind of push through something and get faster, I like to use an arrow going in the direction of the music to let me know that we're going to speed up a little bit. Now if we're going to slow down, I'd use an arrow in the opposite direction to let me know to pull back. Lines are very handy as well. I like to use lines to let me know if something is conducted in two or in four by using two lines or four lines. I'm also very prone to using lines to lay out the downbeats of a bar if I have to play a bass line that is somewhat complex and I need to know where those downbeats happen. It helps me count through the bar and play the rhythm right. Tip number two. Don't be shy about very deliberately counting bars when you're resting. Sometimes we have to rest for many, many, many bars. You're hidden away usually in the pit. Nobody can see you. Mouth the beats if you have to. I also will conduct, especially if there's time changes, I will conduct my way through the rests and count so I know exactly when to come in. Number three, circles. Circles are very handy for bringing out things in the music that you might have missed the first time. I'm very big on marking things that I don't get the first time. I guarantee you most of the time if you mark something that you missed, you won't miss it again. This includes accidentals, maybe some rests that you miss, maybe a measure like a 2-4 measure wedged in there that you didn't catch the first time, maybe a particularly tricky little solo fill that you have to play in a bar, you can circle it. Make sure you put a bullseye on it so that you look at it and you know that it's coming up. And I will never be shy about marking anything that's in the key signature that I missed. If it's a B flat and I played a B natural, I will never be shy about writing in that it's a B flat. I will also never be shy about writing in a fingering that helps me play the music better. Remember the end goal. It's to sound good, to play the music right. There are no style points in this business. There is nobody watching you in the pit, but everybody's listening to you. So write whatever you have to, as long as it's going to help you play better. Number four, let's talk about the elephant in the room, page turns. This is a big deal when we're playing Broadway shows. Most books are two pages, and you're left with what you have to deal with. If you're in the middle of playing something and you gotta flip a page, what are we supposed to do? Well, there's a few different strategies we can use, but the first thing I want you to do is look at the book the next time that you see it. Look down at the right corner. You see those two letters? V-S. That's the first indication that something's happening and quickly. V-S is an abbreviation for, seriously, very swiftly. That's what it means. VS means very swiftly. In other words, turn the page because something is happening right away. Now, most often, a lot of copyists will lay out our books so that we have beautiful rests that will allow us to flip pages, but sometimes that just doesn't happen. We have to give ourselves some preparation. Sometimes we have to let ourselves know to turn the pages early so that we'll be able to play what's immediately happening on the next page. And of course, when all else fails, don't forget to just hammer on with your left hand and turn with your right. I've actually worked with some musicians that will print out another page that they can flip open so that they don't have to do a big page turn. Some musicians will write portions of music in so that they don't have to do a big page turn. Personally, I like to let myself know what's going to happen on the next page and what's happened on the previous page. Let's take a page where I'm turning and I know that I don't have to do anything. I'm going to write the word time in. You'll also see this in several Broadway books, time. That means 
Don't be in a hurry, it's okay. You're resting during the page turn. You have at least a bar or two before you have to play again. Time, you have time. Sometimes what I'll do is actually write that next note that I'm gonna play on the next page so that it's in my head. So when I see the bottom of that page, I know what's coming, I can flip a little early and know what the note is gonna be. Playing a Broadway show book is really about knowing what's coming in front of you. Whether it's a key change, whether knowing that you're gonna to have to have your bow ready to go, or knowing that there's a big time change that's gonna come, or a new type of groove. You have to know what's coming. I will write in as much as possible to let myself know what's coming so that I can be prepared for it, whether it's a page turn or any one of these other things. Mark up the book. If you have to have your extension open, Pick a rest in the music when you can open it well before you need to have it open. If you're switching instruments from electric to acoustic and the book doesn't tell you to get ready to do that, give yourself a reminder in the book. The art to playing a Broadway show is not that you're reading the whole thing. It's that you've choreographed what you're gonna do and you know what's coming. Always remember, the music in a Broadway show isn't necessarily in the book. The two places you need to look for it are at the conductor and in your hands. That's where the music is gonna happen. The book just informs that. So you gotta mark it up so that you're prepared as possible. My last tip is this, learn the show. Put on the Broadway cast recording and follow along in your book at a minimum. That way you'll know exactly how things are supposed to sound, how they feel, and what's coming next. That way, you can feel comfortable enough to take your eyes off the book every once in a while and look at the MD and still know what's gonna happen. In fact, there's a marking that you might see in books and I like to give it myself. That's the marking that you need to look up and watch what the conductor is doing. And for me, that's always been to draw a set of glasses. Some musicians draw eyes. That just means get your eyes off the page and look at what the MD is doing and how they're conducting you. The better you know the music of the show, the more yourself you can put into it and the more fun you can have doing it. And believe me, I've had a ton of fun playing musicals. Over 30 plus years, some of my favorite shows to play have been West Side Story, Chorus Line, Dream Girls, Parade, In the Heights. I've had a chance to play some wonderful Pulitzer Prize winning music and I've met some of the greatest people I know to date. So the next time you get an opportunity to sit in the pit of a Broadway show, don't turn it down. It's a chance for you to grow musically, make a little money, make some meaningful connections with other musicians in the pit or on stage. And in the end, take one or two weeks of your life to learn some new music and be better off because of it. So I'll see you in the pit. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please don't hesitate to click that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? All original, jazz, bass-centric content coming at you as fast as I can deliver it. Don't miss my next video. Until next time, take care of yourself and please love your neighbor.